What is up you guys? In this one, I'll show you how to use CUDA kernels and striding on Jupyter Notebook or Google Collab. But before I do so, I want to tell you that GTC 23 is taking place on March 20 till 23, 2023. Perfect. The following video was recorded on NVIDIA's Orin Supercomputer in Abu Dhabi and under a Creative Commons license. I'm Ahmed Bezzi signing in on this one. So for those of you who don't know GTC, it's NVIDIA's annual GPU technology conference focusing on GPU technology and its applications. The conference brings together experts and founders like Demis Hassabis, industry leaders, visionaries and researchers like Anima Anand Kumar and many more. You can get to meet professionals in various fields such as artificial intelligence, high performance computing, data science and autonomous vehicles to showcase the latest innovations in GPU technology and share best practices. At GTC, NVIDIA and its partners demonstrate the latest advancements in hardware and software technology, including GPUs, system architectures, AI frameworks, libraries, tools, and many more. And the best part about it is that it's open to everyone, including you. Perfect. But I'm also hosting an awesome 4080 RTX GPU giveaway with supreme ray tracing performances thanks to the 76 dedicated ray tracing cores. If you're a gamer, designer, or even an editor, you will love it. Perfect. To participate in this giveaway, all you gotta do is sign up using the link below to GTC Attend Jensen's keynote on March 21st, 8 a.m. PDT or 4 p.m. CET. And some sessions of your own choice. Then screenshot me a proof that you attended the sessions directly on my email found in the description below. I will then pick a winner at random and ship him or her the GPU. Perfect. You are tuned in to another Armored Batsy video. Perfect. Now... After we open Jupyter Notebook or Google Collab, let's find out about the GPU we are using. Please note that your GPU, or in case you're using Google Collab or your own custom GPU could be different than mine. Of course, the numbers I'm giving below and the picture are only valid for the GPU dedicated to me. We can see that I'm on an NVIDIA Orin supercomputer with a given universal unique identifier, UUID, and that the device is supported on my Jupyter Notebook. Let's get started by implementing a first CUDA kernel to compute the square root of each value in an array. First, here's our 4096 sized float32 NP array. Perfect. Now, we can simply use numbers vectorized decorator to compute the square root of all elements in parallel on the GPU as follows. We'll do the same with a custom CUDA kernel. We first define our kernel as I do CUDA.JIT. So here we have an input array of 4096 values, so we will use 4096 threads on the GPU. Our input and output arrays are one-dimensional, so we will use a one-dimensional grid of threads. The call CUDA.GRID of 1 returns the unique index for the current thread in the whole grid. With 4096 threads, index or IDX will range from 0 to 4095, that is 4096 minus 1. Then we see that each 
thread is going to deal with a single element of the input array to produce a single element in the output array. This element is determined for each thread by the thread index, IDX. Now that we have our kernel, we copy our input array to the GPU device. Create an output array on the device with the same shape and finally launch the kernel. Here the 4096 threads are arranged into a grid of 32 blocks where each block has 128 threads. In general, the CUDA kernel launch overhead increases with the number of blocks. Going for such a large number of blocks would hit performance. In the following, I will show you how to use striding to solve this problem. Perfect. Now, the simple kernel deals with a single element of the input array. When the kernel is deployed, the GPU therefore needs to create as many threads as elements in the array, which potentially results in many blocks if the array is large. On the contrary, a striding kernel deals with several elements of the input array, using a loop as follows. In this way, a given thread deals with several elements, and the number of threads is kept under control. Threads keep doing work in a coordinated way, and the GPU is not wasting time creating and scheduling threads. Now, let's consider a small example with an input data array of size 8 and blocks with 4 threads each. Now, without striding, we need to use 2 blocks, so 8 threads in total, each dealing with a single element in the array. So now we could launch one block of four threads as follows. Here are the elements processed by each thread. A useful way to think about this is to imagine that the grid is moving to process all elements in the input array. Now let's do some performance analysis, where we study the influence of striding and of the execution configuration parameters in the processing of a large array. So let's redefine our kernels, the simple one and the striding one. Now we create a big array. We ship it to the device and we create the output array on the device as usual. First, let's see how fast we can process this array sequentially in a single thread on the GPU. We use the striding version here since obviously the simple version would only be able to process one element in a single thread. Processing these 256 million values in a single thread on the GPU took about a minute and 17 seconds. Let's see how parallel processing can help us. For that, we choose an execution configuration by following our simple rules, and we use the non-striding kernel. The parallel version is much faster as expected. Perfect. 
Now let's try and see if the striding version brings any performance improvement. The gain is not very significant, but indeed much better than the sequential single threaded one. So that's it guys. In this one, we simply showed you how to use CUDA kernels and striding on our Jupyter Notebook, or if you're using Google Collab, or even your own local machine with a custom GPU. Don't forget to attend GTC so that you can participate in the 4080 RTX giveaway. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel so that you can help me produce more content and know that this video was beneficial to you. This is Ahmed Bazi and I'm signing out. You are watching a master at work.